Welcome back to the Express. We're going to head back out on the waters of Falls Creek later on the show to try yoga on the stand-up paddle boards. But right now we're learning the good green word from a place you probably wouldn't expect, the mall. It's true, recently hundreds of thousands of ladybugs were released in Metropolis and Metro Town. To contribute to their green initiatives, today Metropolis and Metro Town unveiled bug-inspired eco-sculptures. We, over the last uh, 10 years, have inst um, started a ladybug program, which is something in, in lieu of using pesticides and herbicides here to prey on the predators that prey on our landscaping. Those are aphids, right? With your guys' help today, I want you guys to release the ladybugs on your eco sculptures that you planted. Tom is a great, I mean, he's just, he's just great with kids. And so when we talked about doing the ladybug release with kids, he was all over it. Don't be afraid. Come on. Man. Don't be afraid. I play football. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He really enjoys actually giving them that extra bit of information they have so they can actually learn something in the process, but also does it in a really, really fun way. It felt really cool. It was like all tingly and it, it didn't hurt. Like I, I used to be afraid of insects until like three weeks ago. Tom Monroe has been the head landscaper at the mall for 14 years. He's initiated a lot of things on site here that we do. Uh, and basically it just it helps not only our own property, the community, but you know everybody in general. I love my job. I love the challenges on a daily basis of having working in this environment, which is just a lot of people, uh, a lot of um, changing circumstances with the weather. Here, I'll show you what I want you to do. I want you to take it like this, I want you to throw them right at the base of the tree there. It felt ticklish and scary. Does this make you like gardening? Yeah, I actually really like gardening. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, right at the that base of the tree, there you go. And he seemed to get his message across to these kids. We need the environment to live. Like We breathe through like trees and everything, so at this age, if we learn about all of this stuff, it could help us in the future so we could like help plant more trees and we learn more about it so we could stop like you know killing ladybugs because I, I didn't really know what ladybugs were for, for last time. In Burnaby, feels weird. Yeah. I'm Melanie Panetta for The Express. Going to my oh yeah, they're everywhere. Here's a fun fact for you. Ladybugs only live for about a year. And here's another one. Did you know that stand-up paddleboarding has its origins in the Hawaiian Islands? It was nicknamed Beach Boy Surfing. And let's see what kind of name we can come up with later when we add yoga to the mix. That's right, that's what's coming up. But first, it's a Galileo gravity experiment at the H.R. McMillan Space Center. Well, hi there, it's Cam Cronin here at the H.R. McMillan Space Center for the Express. Many of you probably remember a guy named Galileo because he did come up with some pretty neat discoveries, one of which was objects uh, falling with a gravity field. Now, objects falling in gravity is something that we're all aware of. You trip and you fall. But Galileo was looking at how objects of different mass fall here on Earth. Now, basically, up until that point, there was uh, other people so-called scientists that would say that of course a heavier thing falls faster. If you drop a rock versus dropping a small pebble, the rock is going to fall faster. So I'm going to actually show you a, a quick little experiment here. I have two objects. I have a, a heavy object, which is a phone book, and a, a light object, which is a little pamphlet. Now I'm going to drop these at exactly the same time and we're going to see which one hits the ground first. So we'll go three, two, one, and... Now, if you saw this, they both hit at exactly the same time. Gravity pulls everything down at an equal rate. So you would think Galileo would be vindicated. Everybody would have said, hey, way to go. It doesn't really matter what the mass is because gravity pulls everything down at the same rate. But you'd be wrong because Galileo did not have that easy a time of it because somebody suggested, well, what happens if I dropped a feather and a hammer? Which one is going to hit the ground first? And of course, well, I can show you. Let's, let, let's say I drop something that's a little bit lighter. So instead of that, that other book, I've just got a, a, a piece of paper and I still have our, our phone book here. I drop them at the same time. The phone book definitely hits first. So Galileo's problem was that there was something that was interfering with that light object, be it a piece of paper or a feather hitting the ground. And that, of course, is air. So he said, well, just remove the air. But of course, in Galileo's time, there was no way to create a vacuum until a few years ago, uh, when they went to the moon. Now on the moon, of course, it is a vacuum. Our astronauts were up on the surface of the moon and they were able to prove Galileo's experiment. If you look here at this, 
clip, you can see the astronaut has a hammer and a feather. He drops both of them at exactly the same time, and watch. They hit at exactly the same time. That's removing that variable of error. So Galileo was correct. So the next time you drop a couple things off your, your, your front porch, uh, safely, uh, you'll realize that, of course, if we had uh, air as a variable and we took that variable away, things fall at exactly the same rate. That's something that uh, we use, of course, every single day. And Galileo, uh, pretty smart guy for being uh, 400 years ago and a lack of true scientific equipment. He was a pretty amazing character. For the Express here at the H.R. McMillan Space Center, I'm Cam Cronin, and happy uh, dropping things. The Space Center is booking now for their kids' summer camps. They have a Galactic Crusader camp that's running mid-July and Mission Impossible camp for August. You're watching The Express, and if you stay with us, we'll show you some camps that are just for active adults. After the break, SUP Yoga in Falls Creek. BC is the mecca for mountain biking is that there's very mature trail network. A seven day cross country mountain bike race. The Express, this is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio, loungehairstudio.com. Adventure racing takes serious dedication, and the key to a long career is using your head. Doing positive things like wearing my helmet and gear have kept me in the game all these years. I've been injury-free in all my sports. No downtime. So hey, use your head and ride to survive. You can call me Dave Nerona, the injury-free karma man. Welcome back to the Express at False Creek. Today on the show, we've been trying out one of the fastest growing water sports in the world, stand-up paddle boarding. And now we're gonna take things a step further by asking you to think of your board as a moving yoga mat. I started doing it on my board and I thought, why not share this with others? Knowing that Vancouver is the yoga capital of Canada, it just seemed like the perfect fit. First question is always really on the water, but it is actually quite fun and a great exercise. Yeah, lower down, chaturanga. Yeah. Downward facing dog, just like that. Yeah. You walk out the dog, bend the knees left and right, and then you start to feel how the board moves when you move. We start with our basic sun salutation right through your warrior series. It gets a little more challenging. Then we get into arm balances, headstands, a um, little bit of everything. And then take your right foot all the way to the front and lower your back knee. The trick is, like, my body's twisted on purpose, my board twisting not on purpose. <laughs> One-legged balancing is the most difficult. Wow, this is super peaceful. Like, that's amazing. The board becomes your moving mat, so you have something acting upon you as opposed to just being in a closed room studio. You've got all of the weather conditions and the, the sun, the warmth, the wind in your face. It just all adds together to the natural elements of yoga. And when in doubt, if you think that the sub yoga is too much for you, you can always just go into like your om pose. Board will travel. The Stand Up Paddle Vancouver team offers private and group lessons on both the paddling and the yoga. Now, another sport that's super popular in BC is biking, and every style has its showcase. Free riding has crank works, road riding has the Grand Fondo, and now cross country mountain biking has the BC Bike Race. Big Summer is brought to you by Cultus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. Today I want to show you the last part of the course that we're going to be utilizing for this year's BC Bike Race. 
Local course designer Grant Lamont rides the Zappa Trails, the final leg of the seven-day staged BC bike race that travels up from Vancouver Island to the Lower Mainland and then finally here to Whistler on July 9th. We're going to show you where the moss is green and there's fresh rock lines and uh, newly built bridges and show the type of uh, support that we get from the municipality. And Whistler isn't the only BC municipality doing so. In addition to showcasing the beauty of BC's rugged west coast, the BC Bike Race puts a spotlight on the province's incredible cross-country mountain bike trail network, something easily taken for granted by locals. Go anywhere else in the world and they, they, they build a bike path, you know, that two trucks can go by and they're like blowing themselves away, right? They're happy as hell. What people don't understand about um, why BC is the mecca for mountain biking is that there's very mature trail networks. We've had 30 years of trail building going on. Just get caught behind something and go to pass. Andreas right, Hessler, right, right. a three-time National Series cycling champion and 1996 wow, Olympian, is now an ambassador for the BC Bike Race, what he affectionately knights the off-road Tour de France. The low ones, and then you put the... This race boasts the biggest quota of single track in the world, with upwards of 500 international and local riders contesting roughly 350 kilometers of shredding. And down. down. We're moving almost a thousand people for seven days, and that's seven nights from uh, Vancouver over to Vancouver Island, down the Sunshine Coast to Squamish and finally to Whistler, where we have our uh, triumphant finish. A nice single track tear through the Zappa Trails await before crossing the finish line at Whistler Olympic Plaza. I think Whistler really provides something at the end of the race that people are looking for in an experience, some place to celebrate and, uh, and take it easy for a little bit. And hopefully they will do so on two wheels exactly what this BC Bike Race crew aims to do. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Big Summer. Big Summer is brought to you by Caltus Lake Water Park, BC's number one water park. The BC Bike Race hits Squamish on July 8th and then Whistler on July 9th. And if you go to bcbikerace.com, you can find out where to go to cheer them on. And for other ways to enjoy life on the West Coast, we have ideas with today's Cultus Lake Big Summer Spotlight. Enjoy an action-packed day at the Western Canadian Flag Football Championships. Held at the exhibition fields in Abbotsford, the day includes kids' activities, raffles, trophies, and the fastest man competition. Join in the ultimate celebration of music, food, and culture. The Surrey Fusion Festival features more than 40 international and local artists, along with a fusion of 30 pavilions and exhibitors. The 80th annual Stanley Park Open has grown into North America's largest community tennis event. The event features over a thousand participants, all set against the spectacular backdrop of Stanley Park. And that's it for today's Express from False Creek. We're going to leave you with a look at what's happening this summer at Arts Umbrella, and we'll see you next time.